Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Reality Is. As always, it's newer, and um, today's episode is going to mostly be a chat that I had with Kelly Williams, the Laguna Biatch host of Beyond the Blinds, and um, we're talking about Summer House and Vanderpump Rules. I did watch Beverly Hills, and I wanted to quickly share my thoughts on that. I didn't watch Potomac because I have no motivation at all to watch that show, and it is a shame, and I've mentioned this every week, but... I know that there was an event at Shasha's house. Um, Nick had tried to be cute. Uh, there was not nearly enough Karen. Candace and Robin had words, but like the show is literally going nowhere. So I'm not even going to bother watching it or talking about it. But Beverly Hills, with the final reunion, Kathy showed up, um, spooked the pants right off of Sutton, S- spooked the legs right off of Sutton. She could use those legs. And then she got, you know, sent to the hospital. The internet was like, she got airlifted. She did not. She went in a car on the road like a person. She probably went to urgent care or whatever. Um, But it is funny. Like, I I think one of the first thoughts I had was, is Sutton's afraid of Kathy? Uh, Yeah, of course. The way that Kathy is maniacally laughing when that clip plays of Erica saying, Kathy has a lot of power. Listen, I've watched enough Sopranos and Mob Wives to know a thing or two okay that lady is terrifying okay nobody wants to be in her bad book and she's the kind of terrifying lady who's going to terrify you and then be like what what do you mean i didn't do anything she's a monster so yes sutton is afraid of kathy and sutton is exactly the kind of person to be afraid of kathy erica is not afraid of kathy that's why kathy doesn't really care to try to be friends with erica there's nothing that she can gain from that relationship but Sutton is afraid of Kathy but Sutton also wants Kathy's attention because Sutton is an you know uh, an old school southern lady who wants the attention of the the fanciest lady in town they like still functioning on like 1950s Hollywood standards you know what I mean so yeah she scared the legs right out of little Sutton Sutton and Garcelle left And that was it. Then we had this like a whole Kathy and Kyle segment. And again, I have to ask, why do we care? Why is this lady here? She was not on the television show. That story about the hair salon after the wedding where Kathy heard Kyle walk in and she said, oh, that's my sister. And then Kathy starts crying. She was like, oh, Kyle was so proud of me. I felt included. It's like, okay, so this is why Kathy was pissed last season because Kyle was making fun of her. And Kyle chose her friends over Kathy. And that's why she was so pissy and angry and that's why Kyle didn't want to talk to her they're both honestly children it's like it's interesting but also like not interesting enough for you to bring Kathy on when she was not on a single scene this entire season now the good thing about Kathy being there is when they start to talk about Kyle's marriage Kathy is a lot more open about things than Kyle is so thanks for bringing Kathy around for that because guess what guys guys what did Kyle tell us absolutely nothing okay she said it's nobody's fucking business what happens in her marriage okay you know there's a lot of things that kyle says that i'm just like please just roll the clips kyle getting mad at sutton because sutton's asking about her marriage when her daughters are upstairs you got mad at denise for asking you guys not to talk about threesomes in front of her daughter And you were so mad at her that you dragged her through um, hell. You dragged her personal life, a potential affair, dragged her marriage and everything through the show, driving her off the show. So for you to sit there, Kyle Richards, and say it's nobody's business and then give us absolutely nothing when he came to Morgan, I'd be very happy if Kyle wasn't on the show next season. Take Kyle off. Give me Kathy. Because Kathy's actually going to tell us what's going on with Kyle. Kyle's not going to tell us shit. So what was the point? What was the point? All those questions about Kathy or sorry about Morgan and what's going. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in our marriage. I don't know if I like her. I don't know. I think she's hot. I don't know what's going on. Just admit it. Just admit it. Just say it. Just say, I don't know if I am interested in her romantically yet, but I, what I do know is that I am exploring new sides of myself. Okay. Nothing that Kyle told us is new information. Now, what was interesting is that they asked Doree how she felt when she saw Mauricio holding hands with his Dancing with the Stars partner. And I thought, huh, 
why are they asking Dorit? And Dorit says, it was as if I saw PK holding hands with somebody else. And I thought, huh, interesting. Interesting. A lot of over the top sighing from Denise, or sorry, from Dorit's corner. A lot of over the top sighing. A lot of, oh, oh, ah, prayers. Oh, ah. It's like, okay, Dorit, you're really pushing it. Anyway, that was it. That was it for Beverly Hills. Um, I will just transition over right now to my chat with Kelly Williams. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I am good. I'm so excited to be back and talk about my favorite show, which is Summer House. Yes. Yes. You know what I love about Summer House is that um, – Like, I was looking at my notes for Summer House and my notes for Vanderpump Rules. And with (laughs) Vanderpump Rules, there's so many scenes. There's so many scenes. Like, LVP meets with this person and then Tom goes here and then, like, Lala goes to her office. Like, there's so many things. What I love about Summer House is that (laughs) oftentimes we get, like, six to seven very entertaining minutes of them just, like, getting out of the cab, going inside, changing their clothes, kissing each other goodnight. Like, what are they – like, I don't know what it is. All those, like, little secret hidden camera shots of bedtime routines at Summer House, I sometimes find that so much more entertaining than, like, you know, Lala's rebranding herself, okay? No, I totally agree with you. I mean, those like big brother cameras change it completely. (laughs) And there's no way to be like, oh, no, we just went like we just got in bed and fell asleep. Like watching West and Kyle spoon each other. A plus plus 10 seconds. You know what I mean? (laughs) And I think that's also why it is so infuriating that we are now on the second fight of this season with Carl and Lindsay that does not have any camera footage. How are you going to present me with a television show where I get to see people's flatulence at night, but I don't get to see a fight between an obviously toxic couple in a lift? Right. Like I have seen every angle of Kyle Cook's asshole. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think that I don't think there has been a single piss that Kyle has taken on this show that has not been on camera. So how are you not going to show me these fights that Lindsay and Carl keep having? We've already watched Wes and Jess or West. I'm sorry. It's West yes. and Jesse cross streams, you know, and it's episode <laughs> three. Yes. Okay. I have a lot of thoughts about Vanderpump Rules, too, because you and I talked before. We are Shishu apologists. <laughs> Yes. Um, but you know, as we last spoke, we were gonna talk about the fall of the house of Hubbard, Hub or of Rad House, actually. And um we're here. We're in it, baby. We are we're right in it. So let's just talk about Summer House. The episode starts for like just a second with us pretending like Lindsay and Carl are fine, and it very quickly devolves into like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. And it's crazy. Like, the thing is, I know we're going to talk about it, about obviously their fight. It's like, it's okay to say Lindsay is mean and out of pocket. And also Carl is an angry person, which we have seen since season one. Yes. Yes. (laughs) You know what it is? I think that they both... Let's just jump right in. Okay. All that really happens this episode, to be honest, is like there's multiple meals. There's comings and goings going to various locations, drinks, drinks, shots, shots, food, food, and just like the tension between Carl and Lindsay, the fight between Carl and Lindsay, and then how the house reacts to it. And then, of course, there is like Amanda and Kyle are like, also, guys, don't forget that we also have like communication problems. We're also part of (laughs) like nobody cares. You guys are married. Go. (laughs) Please. But. This big fight that happens with Carl and Lindsay, like, let's just dive right in. I think you're absolutely right. Carl does have darkness to him, and Lindsay is a mean person. But I think at the core, the issue is that they both want to believe that the other person, ha- they they both want the entire world to believe that they believe that this person has changed, and they help this person change, and now this changed person is just theirs. But the reality is that neither of them actually believe that the other person has changed at all. They're both (laughs) lying to each other. They both hate each other. (laughs) Like, I have, I have not, like, even the, 
that first scene where they like, it's just Carl and Lindsay at the house. And Carl's like, hey, you want to hang out? And Lindsay's like, fuck off, man. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I guess the thing, like, I've been a Lindsay apologist as well. Mm-hmm. So, but I do understand that Lindsay's being crazy. I'd also like to like say that. Yeah. But, you know, she's dating someone who like, it's like his what he wants for his career aren't realistic. And it's like you're talking to like a 20 something year old yes. and having a sober bar, like what they went to is really cool, right? Like it's yes. a smaller bar. It's like a safe spot for people who are sober or, or yeah. alcohol free. But like to base a whole sports bar on that, it's not going to work. No. You could have been nicer about it. A hundred percent. It's not going to work. <laughs> And like that was that was like on camera, Lindsay, and she was still so mean. <laughs> so you know that this is like the seventeenth thing that he has like been like, I have an idea, and she's like, Oh, for fuck's sake, man! Like, I get it because Lindsay is a highly ambitious person. I actually think that Lindsay and Kyle don't get along because they are actually the same person for sure, a hundred percent, and they have zero patience for their partners, <laughs> right. none. Like, the way that Kyle is like, fuck it, Amanda, like, doesn't do any work. Lindsay's like, oh, Kyle's like, Carl's on his, like, next bright idea. Like, they they have no patience for the person that they want to be with. But they love the things about the, the things that they love about the person that they're with is that they are not like them. Mm-hmm. But those are also the things that they can't fucking stand. So, like. I actually get it, right? I understand Lindsay's perspective so much because she's like almost 40. She wants to have kids. What's going to happen when she's not working? Like who's going to run the, who's going to pay the bills? This is a person that to some degree, she doesn't just not trust him in his sobriety. I don't think that she really trusts him to do much of anything. And so I understand that frustration. But like my thing with that is then like, then babe, I don't think that this person is right for you. Like, that's what Danielle was trying to say the whole time, guys. Exactly. And it's so crazy because you how you said, like, they want to be the other person to, like, change that person. Yeah. But I also think they were safe bets, right? Like, they've been friends. They got along as friends. They both, like, probably feel some kind of pressure to settle down and get married. Mm-hmm. So why not do that with someone who you genuinely have gotten along with, have been best friends with? I mean, what was it, like season two or three where Lindsay surprises Carl with his mom. Like I genuinely believe that they were really good friends and that's kind of like where it ended. Yeah, I agree. And I think also Carl is beloved like Mm -hmm. by Bravo. And I think Lindsay, you know, damn well, Lindsay's going to be like, Oh, he's the most fucking beloved guy. Let me get that guy. Like she, she, she saw the prize and she took it. And I think Carl loves Lindsay because of those things, right? Because of how she's like been there for him and she knows all these ugly parts of him. But I think that she doesn't have the patience for someone like this. I was speaking to another podcaster, um, the Bravo Papers, it's Bravo and Botox on Instagram. And she was talking about how like being in a relationship with a sober person is a lot of work. Um, But also what people don't realize that people who struggle with addiction also do have, like you said, that darkness to them. Mm -hmm. And that can be really, really difficult as the partner of a very sober person to deal with. And sometimes people think like you should only have like from the outside, they only see like you should only have like infinite amounts of patience for that person and that you are not allowed to say a thing and you're not allowed to lose your shit. But that person may have deceived the person who's not sober. They may have lied to that person who's not sober because addiction can be tricky like that, right? And so I I think that all those things are true and they could have happened in their relationship, but like you add on to all of those things a television show that Lindsay already fucking kind of like hates filming. Like (laughs) she's gotten like 10 years of bullshit edits. I mean, not bullshit. She she does it to herself. But she... (laughs) You know, she's had like 10 years of like being a villain. Then she goes into a house where nobody likes her Mm -hmm. and everybody's waiting for this relationship to fall apart. And it's almost she's like, fuck it. Let's just fucking set this shit on fire, baby. And I'm like, well, I'm entertained. (laughs) That's the thing. Lindsay Hubbard will always be Lindsay Hubbard, whether you like her or not. And like, I know everybody's you know, journey to becoming sober is very different. 
but Carl does still have so much anger in him. I mean, even if you watch the Watch What Happens Live episode after Summer House, the way he got so mad at Trishel, like jaw clenched. Granted, she did say, I know how women are edited on television. So I do have to give Lindsay some like grace here. I'm kind of team Lindsay on this. Obviously, he's going to be mad, but like his whole body changed. He's tense. And yeah, I, I don't think people remember Carl screaming at Jules, you know, yes. and like, granted, he wasn't sober, but if he's not also, you know, going to therapy and like, you can be a dry drunk, the term's yeah. there for a reason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that that stuff that Lindsay says, like, people don't know how dark and angry Carl is. Everybody thinks that I'm the problem. I, I, I so feel that for her because I am very much the like Lindsay of my relationship and my Mm. husband is very soft-spoken and he is totally an introvert but there are times when like I know I'm not in the wrong but I don't like there have been times in the past when I wouldn't even talk about issues in my relationship because I would be like well people are naturally going to take his side because I'm so like I'm like the frantic woman like I'm so hysterical and Lindsay's like got 10 years of on-camera footage proving that out. And so she's like, this is already a hole I cannot dig myself out of. So I have no choice but to be absolutely patient with this person. And no one's even patting me on the back for having patience for this person. That's like why she sort of storms off at the end of the episode because she's like, not everyone is going to come at me about this. At the same time, Linz. Right. No one's coming at you. They're being very gentle with you. And... (laughs) I think, and I think what Lindsay was trying to say about like, but were you sober? You're not so, you still smoke weed. And I think she was, she wasn't articulating it correctly. And obviously I could be totally wrong, but I think she was like, I drink because I'm uncomfortable in this house. You will smoke weed to calm down. Like you also use a substance, even if it's not alcohol or cocaine or Molly or ecstasy or whatever else, there is still like a substance happening. Yeah. Exactly. And again, she's totally wrong in how right. she cares. I, let's just I, let's just be very clear. Okay. <laughs> Kelly and I, we recognize that lit like there because there's people are crazy on the internet. Um, we just want to be clear, Lindsay is wrong. Okay. Yes. But one understands where Lindsay might be coming from because Lindsay is like she's such a wound up type person that's why it's so funny when she does that toast at dinner and she's like hey i'm so glad everyone's getting along blah 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 and they like make a joke about carl and she's like shut the fuck like she just (laughs) it's so funny because it's like Lindsay, you're not tricking anybody here like you don't want to be here you hate everybody here it's okay like let's lead into that i know and i i don't think they should have came back this season i get that they probably had to i agree and you know, maybe things were bad and Carl was like, no, we have to go on. Like, people have to see what I'm dealing with. Yeah. And I do agree with that. I guess, I, again, like, I agree with both. But do I think calling someone a cokehead or acting like <laughs> cocaine Carl is a good thing to say? No. But, like, I'll say in my life, there are people who have said they're sober and they're not. And Mm -hmm. I have said things being like, you're acting like you're drunk right now. You can keep telling me no, but I know how you are when you're drunk. So I guess maybe that's why I see Lindsay's side too. Yeah. And and also add on top of that, you're planning a wedding, which is the most stressful time. Like my husband and I have been together for so long, but we always say the worst year of our relationship was the year that we were engaged because it is hell. It is awful. But like add on top of that cameras and <laughs> and also Carl doesn't have a career, you guys. The man doesn't have a career, okay? <laughs> we are 10 years on Carl not having a career. He quit last year. Also, can I just say, because we're talking about Loverboy, like just for a second, he quit Loverboy last year. Kyle Cook has a lot of damn fucking nerve to be like, it is so messed up that <laughs> Lindsay is accusing you of being on cocaine. <laughs> Meanwhile. The man started off the season last year with this shit. And him and him being like, yeah, you know, Carl, how long are you going to fight like this with your fiance? And it's like, Kyle, we, we've we seen your entire relationship with Amanda. Right. Let's not. 
Let's, let's not throw it. stones here. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what do you think about this um, West and Sierra relationship? I think it's sweet and I wish they would stop her being like, I like funny guys. And then seeing Austin, I'm like, Austin is a demon. Austin <sighs> is not funny. West is like sweet, goofy, lovable. At- <laughs> Please don't disappoint us, West, first yes. of all. We but I do. think it's sweet and like, you know what? Sierra is probably one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. Yes. And I think it's cool that she's down to just date people for their personality. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Not ugly or anything. Like, I don't think he's ugly, but like, he's not a supermodel the way Sierra is. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I love that Sierra is like, I'm one of the most private people in the house. I'm like, we've known, we know every single person that you dated. <laughs> what are you talking about? We know that you don't even know what a lobotomy is, but you were a nurse. We know <laughs> that you thought like August came after September. <laughs> Sierra, if anything, we know too much about you and your thoughts. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I love how excited West is to like just be like hanging out with her. You know, I love that she's like making him sweat and he's just like, listen, I'm just going to make out with you. Look, I and I get. Yes, I agree with you. Austin is not funny. No. At all. OK. There's, <laughs> I don't. There's nothing likable about Austin. Actually, he's just tall. Yeah, like just because he yells jokes doesn't mean he's funny. Okay, he's the worst. It's like <laughs> it's like the same way I don't think Kyle is funny at all. Like Kyle always comes in and makes like a dad joke, frat boy adjacent thing, and we're like, oh God, shut up, Kyle. Unfortunately, I love Kyle. <laughs> so unfortunate. I just like I <laughs> I haven't drank in like six months. I just decided to take a break. Uh-huh. But like drunk me and Kyle Cook are like very unfortunately similar. <laughs> You're just like eating Tostitos in your underwear at falling like three asleep. o'clock in the morning. Yeah, falling asleep <laughs> eating cookies in like the pantry. Yeah, that's me. Well, I'm mostly a sober person and I've done that. So <laughs> I don't think that's, I don't know if that's a Kyle Cook thing or just like a, you know, a little mouse thing. I don't know. Um <laughs> Do you have I I was really proud of Danielle. Me too, my girl. I was really proud of her. She's she stepped out. She's I'm gonna dip my feet in the pool. I'm gonna keep my thoughts to myself. Honestly, I was watching it with my girlfriend and she was like, Do you feel like you'd be like Danielle? I'm like, Yes, I would have to like remove myself so I wouldn't be like, just so everybody knows, this is why I was a psycho last summer. <laughs> this is what I was seeing before everybody else. I would gym from the office that camera the entire time this happened i would be like are you guys do you see this do you see this are you guys catching this that would be me the entire time be like look at look at and then i just walk away it was yeah better than me because (laughs) now i don't really watch watch what happens live i only watch clips of it but i did Mm -hmm. see Lindsay come on like last week i think and she said that danielle was probably right about uh, her relationship last year and I was like oh you know what I'm so happy for you Danielle were you also happy for me yes <laughs> <laughs> one in the same yeah exactly one in the same <laughs> um any other thoughts about summer house before we move over to Vanderpump rules I'm like weirdly excited about Jesse I know he's I think he's a sleeper <laughs> But, like, I think he's going to be the one to really light the Lindsay and Carl fuse. Because he oh, said yeah. a few times, he was like, poor Carl, man. Carl, man, this is crazy. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> like, even in the car with everyone, he was like, it's not Carl. So I really think Jesse's a sleeper and Jesse's going to be the one to be like, so why are you two even getting married? Oh, yeah. He's going to be the one. He's going to be the one to fall on that sword because yeah. he's new. And she's going to fucking rip him apart. <laughs> And she's going to bring up, like, the dent in his chest for no reason. <laughs> she's going to make fun of him for having one ball. It's like, the man is a cancer survivor. Right. <laughs> and with, like, the audacity of you. You don't know what it's like to live a hard life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> a cancer survivor. Like, but I, I do think, I think he's going to be good. Um West and Sierra, I'm excited to see them like flirt and make out and cuddle because she was sitting on his lap at that where at crow crow's nest. I don't know where they were. It's called I think it's called 
cowfish. Well, I was, I got the C. <laughs> but also every time they say it, I'm like, what? Who decided these names? The Hamptons, I swear. Totally, totally. Yeah, I'm excited to see everything happen. And I wish people could just be like, yeah, Carl is an angry person and Lindsay's mean and they bring out the worst in each other. Yeah, exactly. It's so clear cut to me also that I don't know why it's even a debate. Like, I'm like, all of these things are true about all of these people. I do think we need to talk about the ending where Lindsay yeah. just like slithers out of the gate. And, like She's like, where am I going? <laughs> she does. We, she goes into the woods. She does. She does. She's about to gone girl herself like Kate Middleton. Oh, my God. (laughs) If anyone's going to gone girl, it's going to be Lindsay. (laughs) She has a PR. She knows how to like spin it. 100%. She'd be so good at it. Oh, (sighs) Lindsay. Well, good luck to you. (laughs) I have to say just one last thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not miss Paige at all. Me either. Me either. But the episode where Carl and Lindsay weren't present, I also didn't miss them. No, and neither did Gabby, who like told it <laughs> like right to them. She's like, it's weird. Everyone's getting along. No one's missing. <laughs> oh, well, um, Vanderpump Rules, um, we've mentioned before, you and I got we've got a heart of gold for Sheena. We do. It's good as gold, as some would say. Oh, my goodness. Uh, They're back from Tahoe, and Tom says that he feels that he's been humanized and the scandal is washing off. Do you think that's true? I don't know. I think he just saw that people were still, like, being so mean to Rachel that he was like, cool, I'm off the hook. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much, pretty much. Now, Sheena visits LVP, and um, basically she uses the time to talk shit about her best friend. Uh, We find out that she's really upset about Dancing with the Stars. And it's just so funny because, like, she's like, like, even that way she's telling that story to Lisa, it just cracks me up because I'm like, where does Lisa keep all this information about these people that, like, she says, you know, I picked up Dan from the airport, and then he said he was coming in for the announcement for Dancing with the Stars, and I didn't know about it. And LVP looks so shocked, like, oh, you want to Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, how do you fucking know that, Lisa? That's like, <laughs> it's like, how do you know that about Sheena? And Sheena's like, yeah, I really wanted that. I was practicing dancing or whatever. And it's like, well, what's stopping you from being on Dancing with the Stars? You can still be on. So Troy, my co-host from Beyond the Blinds, said it so perfectly. He was like, Sheena is just Gretchen Wieners. When she was like, I wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars, but I went, I'm going to sit there in the audience because I'm such a good friend. I'm like, that's the only way you can. And the thing is, like, you're allowed to be disappointed, right? Like, yes. if someone I was friends with got some big promotion that I wanted, I would probably talk about it. <laughs> like, yeah. Sheena's a human. <laughs> She is a human. My favorite thing about Sheena is that Sheena is the friend who is like, I put all my friends first, but she won't stop talking about how she put all her friends first. And she was ready to announce her engagement to Brock at James and Raquel's party. Somebody, some beautiful angel human on the internet has put together a compilation. It's like three minutes long. Of Sheena, it starts with Sheena crying in bed last week in Tahoe saying, why can't it ever be about me? And then it cuts to like 10 years of footage (laughs) of Sheena just making every moment about herself. And the thing with Sheena is that Sheena is always afraid that somebody else is going to steal her moment. So then she spends her entire time worrying about that person. And then she's like, well, now it's about that person. It's like, well, Sheena, you made it about that person. (laughs) You did this. This is your <laughs> fault. She does it to herself every time. Um, do you have – I mean, yes, you said she is a human. You have sympathy for Sheena in this situation with LVP. I don't know if it's sympathy, but I get it. Like, I get her being upset. LVP is the one, like, fanning the flame. <laughs> it really is. And even, even um, what was it, last week when Sheena was like, I can't hate him for you or whatever. Yeah. It's like – Sheena's like I get where she's coming from she lost a good friend in Raquel can't be friends with Tom and it's like 
okay, you can cry about it, but not to Ariana. Yeah. You know? That's the problem. It's like Sheena, I Sheena is also the person that wants everybody to know what's going on with her, right? Mm-hmm. Like she wants everybody to know what's going on with her and she wants everybody to be clued in and like she wants everyone to have the same reaction. That's why we have years and years of her telling every single person that they are her best friend. Right. That's my best friend. That's my best friend. We're best friends. Like because in her mind, they are best friends. Everybody is her best friend. They have to know every single little detail about her. I'm sure in Sheena's mind, all of the followers that she has are all her best friends. That's why she's so hurt by the page six stuff, like with that picture, because she thinks that the entire world is like, they all should love me because I, at my core, am a good person who always puts my friends first. <laughs> right. Always. Like, her belief is that she is a good person. She truly <laughs> believes it. And you just can't shake that from people. You can't. It's so silly. Um, Ariana and Lala go out to coffee. They basically talk about Tahoe and Lala tells Ariana about Sheena's like meltdown on page six. And I do think Lala gives really good advice to Ariana to say like, that's your best friend. You should really Mm -hmm. make a statement to like have her back. But I also think like Ariana is so clear in her position about Tom Sandoval that it is like maddening. It is partially maddening that nobody gets it, but also like so on brand for the show because the theme of Vanderpump Rules has always been that like Ariana is the only person who's like a human (laughs) and everybody else is just like constantly thinking about themselves, you know? So what did you think about this whole interaction with Lala and Ariana? So I agree. I think Lala did good, uh, did give good advice on that. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. Again, it's one of those things where they just need to break the fourth wall and be like, we're filming a fucking show. He has to be around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure as a viewer, like, I know for me, it's frustrating that they can't just like put it out there and be like, the only reason we were even there with him is because of this show. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there's also this, like, yes, we keep saying like, oh, it's about friendships and my old friend and all that. But it's also just like about coworkers. Like, I have to work with this person. And what does what does filming a television show with the most hated man in America look like? And what does how what does it make me that I'm willing to film this show with this person? Right. So I don't even think for these girls it's really even about Ariana. I think it's more so about like how is the whole world going to perceive me filming this and and like Sheena got a taste of it with the page six stuff right so now it's like if Ariana gives us the okay on camera then we have that in our back pocket to say look guys like you can't get mad at us because Ariana said it was fine Ariana is not gonna give them that okay because she's I I get it like I get what she's also saying which is you guys can film with him Mm -hmm. I'm not going to film with him You guys can absolutely film with him. You guys can be friends with him. But then I'm going to slowly take myself out. And Lala is like, well, you can't shut yourself down, which to me says we can't film this season without you. Right. And it's like, well, you guys can't have it both ways. But when it comes to Ariana, or I'm sorry, when it comes to Lala, it's never been about Ariana. Oh, no. (laughs) You know, for most of these, I mean, Sheena, I, again, she was actually friends with Ariana. It was yeah. about Ariana, but for like Lala and James and like, it was never about Ariana ever. No, no. They and are Jack just Taylor fucking weaseled his way in. <laughs> I can't believe it. They are <laughs> weaseling the Valley into the show. And I am pissed because you know what? I'm very close to watching that fucking show and I'm not happy about it. Not. I've got previews showing up on my like Instagram and my Twitter feeds. I'm like, ah, why do we know this? Why is Brock there at this pool party? Why is Jax like basically, you know, sexually harassing somebody by pantsing them? Why do I know this? (laughs) They even got these like Valley people on the after show. Oh, like the Vanderpump Rules after show has cast of the Valley joining to talk about the show. It's because it's the last season of Vanderpump and no one wants to admit it. Oh. But I mean, it has to be. I mean, of course, yes. But then, like, don't squeeze the valley in there because now, now I have no choice. <laughs> You're mad about it? I'm so mad because I am going to watch it. 
I'll like, watch a few episodes. For <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait for like the first two episodes to air. I'm going to see the clips that show up on social media. I'm going to see if I care. Maybe listen to a couple of like Watch a Crappin's recaps about it. And then I'll see. Then maybe I'll watch it. And then I'll ask you if I should watch it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Um, Christina Kelly makes an appearance. Do you love Christina Kelly? I like can't stand Christina Kelly. <laughs> reminds, do you know why? It's because she reminds me too much of Jen Bunny. Yes. She is such a Hills character. <laughs> oh. Such a Hills character on Not a Hills show. Yes. She's like a remnant from like time of like reality TV show past, you know? Just to remind you what reality TV used to be, which was saying, <laughs> yeah, and like looking into the distance. <laughs> Asking like word for word verbatim questions that the producer has told you to ask. Right. So what happened at Ledu last night? Like <laughs> <laughs> Literally. She drives me nuts. <laughs> I love that. Well, Katie, Sheena, Lala, go to dinner with Christina Kelly. Um, she is the recap friend. That was like really important. Whitney Port used to be the recap mm -hmm. friend on the Hills, right? So like Christina Kelly did bring that back because everybody else is like too in the know. And so like Christina's there as like a producer like stand in you know that's so funny because Jen Bunny definitely was supposed to be that friend and she was like I'm gonna be a star and Lauren's like we're gonna get the fuck off my show then <laughs> exactly exactly so this is where they slip in some of the valley stuff mm -hmm. about like Jack stepping out on, on Britney I was just like of course well he got a sports bar of course he's gonna cheat on Britney the second those doors opened he his marriage opened exactly exactly um so Sheena then of course because this is again what Sheena does she uses this meal to talk about herself <laughs> and how she is grieving she basically has the exact same conversation she had with LVP with these girls and she says she's grieving the loss of She's now going through the process of grieving her friendship with Sandoval while she's so petty, while Ariana is out there making millions. And I was like, you know what? Ariana, the only friend you have is Katie Maloney. Yeah. Again, I'm a Katie apologist too. Like, I feel yeah. like other than Sheena, I've been on the right side of history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Katie – she will say what's on her mind and she's very straightforward and she doesn't like, you know, like, what is the word? Like, she doesn't beat her on the bush about mm -hmm. what she feels. And I loved when she talks about, like, how Tom Sandoval has been a demon to her and, like, ruined her life for a really long time. And she doesn't understand why anybody should have any sympathy for Sandoval. And I get where Lala is coming from, where she's like, okay, Katie, well, that's you, but Sheena's different. But, like, can we all talk about like the different that Sheena is and how toxic it is? Like, it's not great. No. And they don't even acknowledge Katie's feelings, really. Yeah. Whereas like this man would scream at her on camera. I can't imagine how Tom Zandoval is off camera. Let's start mm -hmm. with that. And like mm -hmm. having that be your husband's best friend. I can't imagine what Tom has been like to Katie off screen. Yeah. Yeah. We don't – we still have not – like for Sheena to be so upset because Tom was her best friend and Raquel was her best friend and Ariana is her best friend and the restraining order, which all certainly are bad. Mm -hmm. But people keep forgetting that Tom Sandoval stirred up this fake fucking plot with Schwartz to make out with Rachel on camera – to make Katie look like a psycho and like rub it in her face and be so mean to the point where Sandoval was screaming at Katie's mom at the right. family party last year. Like why is no one ever talking about the way that Katie is mistreated by this man? And like, if anybody's going to be, has the right to be like upset or grieving anything, like you guys ha gave no sympathy to Katie when she was going through a divorce. Right. You guys immediately brought Schwartz in. And you were like, oh, well, shorts should be here. And like Katie just needs to get over. I totally understand why Katie's like, no, like we need to ride for Ariana. And there's literally nothing that Sandoval could do that would make him a redeemable human being. 
Exactly. And the look that Katie and Ariana shared in the previous episode during the FaceTime was like all I needed to know. Truly. That was also my face when I was watching Sheena have that conversation. I was like, ooh, Sheena. Maybe it's best to say I love Sheena as a reality star, not as like a person outside of a reality show. (laughs) No, I would never be her friend. Right. Whereas like Katie Maloney, I'd want to be her friend. I want to be friends with Katie. Katie Mm -hmm. looks like such a good time. And she's someone who like, I feel like we all need a friend who's not just going to be like, no, it's okay. I think I would like to think that I'm that friend. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to get into astrology later, but what is your zodiac sign? So I'm a cancer sun, Virgo moon, Sag rising. So I have a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a Virgo sun, um, Aquarius moon, and a Taurus rising. Okay. Yeah. Full disclosure. I love Virgos. My girlfriend's a Virgo. I think Virgos are great. We're great. I'm not going to lie. We're <laughs> very good. Okay. But we are also the friends like us and Capricorns and Taurus are the friends that are going to be like, no, mm-hmm. like we're not going to beat around the bush, you know? And um, I love also Katie because I feel like she's a hang that would be like, yeah, let's go out to eat. Let's do stuff. And then she'd be like, you want to just go back to my apartment and just like scroll on our phones on the couch and be like, yes. Right. She's not high maintenance. No. Especially I- not anymore. Yes. And I love and I love that. And I think obviously that doesn't make great reality TV, but it makes a great real life friend, you know? Totally. And I think on reality TV, there has to be real life people like mm-hmm. Before Danielle kind of got her like stardom, I guess, on Summer House, she was just like, she was kind of like the real life person in the house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Let's see, where are we? Uh, LVP and Sandoval meet at Pump Tom because there's like a sign for pump outside of Tom Tom, which is really so strange. Um, They talk about Tahoe and Rachel and Tom says he misses her. And it's so funny to see the switch for Sandoval of like Mr. Ice Cream and Soda Pop to like an absolute slithering venomous snake of a human. His of- mask falls so quick. So fast. It's so satisfying to watch it. Like mm-hmm. it all he all he needs to hear from LVP is Rachel does not like you anymore. And he's like, oh my God, his feelings are so hurt. Um, what do you think he's is going on inside in his like devious little mind? I no longer have someone on my side that will do whatever I say is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think also he lost his like reason for blowing up his life. Yes, he doesn't have that excuse anymore. Mm-hmm. It's no longer like, you know, like all the stuff that Ariana said in that fight. Um, in the very last episode of last season where she said she's lost she's like she's like a young girl and she's lost and she doesn't know what she wants and she's feeding your ego like all of that is true because I think Rachel figured that out and Mm -hmm. she's she's like I'm not doing that anymore this is toxic for me and so all of those things now become true for Tom and it's no longer this like world when we have a connection and we're best friends and it's not just about the sex situation it's we have a special connection and we're good for each other bullshit it's not it's not true and I think that he doesn't have that to fall back on and that whole thing he keeps saying about like we didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. Our intentions weren't to hurt anybody and all this is gone because if it was not just about fucking each other and gay saying fuck off to everybody, if it was about some sort of special connection, that connection doesn't exist. So you don't have that as like your reason. And that makes me really happy. Totally. And I know people still hate Rachel. I get it. Like people won't be happy for whatever, but like I give her credit for doing that. Right. Like, she could have easily just kind of been quiet for a few months, went back with Tom, but it does seem like she's trying to take control and ownership of her life. Do I think every single move she's done is perfect? No, no. but I I do see, like, what she's trying to do, at least. Yeah. The lawsuit's not great. No. No. <laughs> I'm sure not. Um <laughs> I guess like before that lawsuit dropped, I was like, wow, Raquel is, or Rachel is really trying to like, yeah. And then when that dropped, I was like, fuck. 
like, yeah, she Fuck. needs to get away from Bethany. Okay, <laughs> the entire lawsuit reads like a reality reckoning lawsuit. Like it's not mm. even really about what happened between Tom and Ariana and Rachel. It's more about like. Bravo creates a toxic environment and forces people to behave poorly. And it's like, okay, what what else is new? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, Tom also says later on at the stupid date steak night for the boys, which was kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> the rat black night? Oh, my God. Please. Please. Enough with those boys. I, I've hated. I've always hated the boys scenes on Vanderpump Rules. They suck. They've never been fun for me. Unfortunately, the only times I liked was when, like, Jax was drunk yelling at them. Of course. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, sober scenes? No. No. You're just eating meat and, like, being annoying. (laughs) Like, okay. I don't need to watch you eat meat in suits. Yeah. You're, like, sweating, like, your meat sweats into those (laughs) tight suits. Like, no, thank you. (laughs) But he says later on that stupid steak night. That he's bummed because he got no closure from Rachel. And I was like, oh, that's rich. That is rich. (laughs) This man, I swear. Tom, you're such a victim in this whole thing. I am so sorry Rachel hurt your heart. (laughs) (laughs) LVP visits Lala at work. She's rebranding, which I didn't care about. But I did like her talking about her sperm donor journey because now she is pregnant. Congratulations to her. And then she wants to have all these kids and it's really wonderful. But look, I'm all for doing a thing to like better your life. She wants to have siblings for her child. That's great. But there's a lot of times when there is an overcorrection of our trauma Mm. that sometimes can lead to like not the best decision. Not saying that her getting pregnant with a baby, like with a sperm donor is a bad decision. I think it's lovely. She seems very happy. She seems like a great mom. I know friends in real life who know her in real life as a mother and they're like, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's great. But you really see a lot of Lala's overcorrection bleeding into not this particular situation, but like all of her relationships, how she deals with Ariana, how she's dealing with Tom, how she like empathizes with people. It's so aggressive. It's a lot. Lala in general is so confusing to me. Because sometimes, like, I really like her. Like, her calling her, she's like, I don't like the term assistant, so I call her my brain. I'm like, that's nice. What the (laughs) fuck? Do you know what I mean? Then she's ready to, like, punch Katie in the face by the end of the episode. Like, Lala, for me, is really difficult. And I also feel like she's not being honest with herself about the Randall situation. Mm -hmm. Like, about how they met. And, like, if it was five months after, like, her and Randall broke up and she found out Ariana was hanging out with him, but they were filming, but they were filming. Yeah. You know, like she would not be okay with it. Yeah. She screamed at Schwartz last season because he went to play pickleball with him. Right. Okay. Like you, I, and I think like later on, we'll, we'll get into the, the rest of the, the, the conversation they have with Katie. But before that, we get to meet Joe. Yes. Listen, I'm going to say something, and I think it's a little controversial. But I think that it's true. Look, I think Schwartz and Joe are soulmates. They are the same person. They're perfect for each other. I agree. And the thing is, I see how Katie could call her spooky and weird and no one likes her. And you know what? Did I like her? No. But do I think I want her on television? Why fucking not at this point? absolutely they're both they are both aliens like they're both on the same cocktail of substances (laughs) they both read like the same reddit threads like they're both they are i think they're they have twin brains they're twin twin flames no they're twin brains like they are really each other's lobster i think yeah i i don't know if i agree with that because i think schwartz is actually a lot smarter than he than he puts out but i think joe doesn't want to brush her hair, wants to drink beers and have jalapeno poppers or whatever they were eating. And that's like her happiness. And that's beautiful if that's like all she needs. I mean, like, I 
And I think it's really funny that Schwartz is like, oh, well, I couldn't be with Joe because Katie didn't like her. I'm like, okay, bullshit, Schwartz. Like, here you go again, blaming Katie for something that she has literally nothing to do with. Right. Katie's like living her life dating people named Satchel. And (laughs) he's like, I don't know. Katie wouldn't like her. It's like, what what else do you not like about Joe? Do you think that she's going to like devalue you? Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. I think Absolutely. That, I think that he is somebody who really cares about his image still. He still wants to be a guy who gets like hot girls and stuff. And I think like he doesn't want to have to settle down with somebody like Joe, um, who actually is probably his soulmate. It's like I think they're so – honestly, I, I they're weirdos, but I was enjoying watching them together. <laughs> I was – their weirdness matches each other, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Now, they go to like a – it's supposed to be sort of like a double date. I don't know what it is. But Shorts and Joe meet with Allie and James at one of the establishments. And that's when they plan their little pack – rat pack – pack rat night. Um, and- Allie hates it, by the way. Like, Allie sitting there is like, I want to get the fuck out of Sir ASAP. Sandoval shows up and she's like, is that fucking Sandoval? I know. <laughs> she is watching her boyfriend get so easily manipulated and she's like, oh my God, I'm with an absolute idiot. She says in a confessional, I don't want James to get to a point where he says, why did I waste all my time with this loser? And I was like, Allie, the cult's coming from inside the house. <laughs> Say that to yourself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Allie's way too cool for like anyone on this show. <laughs> She's the new Ariana, to be honest. That's really what we're seeing here. That is so yeah, that's perfect. When James is like melting in Tom Sandoval's hands like putty, <laughs> it breaks my heart for him. I don't like James. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like he's whatever james sandoval i mean james sandoval oh my god james. basically but like you know i i still remember him to call on everyone fat multiple times like yes. i hate james kennedy <laughs> like i do not enjoy him <laughs> i get why people do though like yeah he's my problematic favorite on better pump rules so that's my problem um <laughs> I noticed last episode or two episodes ago when they were in Tahoe, James get a call gets a call from his mom whose name is Jacqueline, and I was like, "It's James' mom, Jackie Kennedy." Oh my god, that's so funny! <laughs> James's mom would have been perfect on like, honestly, like Teen Mom as yes. a mother or like, um, like any TLC show. Oh, she's amazing for TLC. VH1 early VH1, she would have killed it. She would have been a rock of love. Oh, my God. She should have been. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so Allie hosts this charcuterie and astrology night with the girlies. And then the guys go and eat these dumb steaks. <laughs> and um, Sheena, we find out that in her chart that Sheena does not put herself first. And this is like where I mentioned that like she's a person who doesn't put herself for first, but she wants everybody to know it. And she wants you to pat her on the back. for Because she wants you to put her first. <laughs> exactly she wants you to feel pity for her and be like no let me put you first and she's like waiting for i is she not a cancer because that's like a very cancer trait you know i don't think she is i know ariana and stassi yes surprisingly stassi okay ariana stassi sandoval i think and Jax, right Jax, and then kyle cook and lindsey hubbard I I think is she not a Leo? Oh, you're right. They're July birthdays, but they're Leos. Mm. And then Amanda is also a Leo. There's a lot going on with some <laughs> of our our faves. Those summer birthdays. Listen, I like, feel it as half- July 14th smack dab in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> as an August Virgo, some of that carries over onto me. So it's very much there. Our summer birthday kids, we're different. We're built different. It's because we never had a birthday in school. Oh, my God. You're absolutely right. That's exactly what it is. Uh, That is exactly what it is. And for the rest of our lives, we are pining for the best birthday ever. But it's never good. (laughs) Because we never got to bring cupcakes to school. Yep. That's that's 100% it. Oh, my God. You just, like, unpacked an entire (laughs) – 
Like I, this is, this is a breakthrough. I'm going to cancel therapy this week. I don't need it. I'm good. <laughs> I hope I helped some listeners as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Ariana shares her financial situation and like the internet is weird about it because she says like right before all this shit went down, I was down to my last $2,000 and the internet is like, these people on reality TV are so bad with their money. Like, don't they have any savings? And I was like, you people have never lived in an expensive city in your lives. Mm -hmm. It is hard. And they also bought a house they shouldn't have because they couldn't afford it. Yeah, because Tom that's wanted really to buy what it, that house. Yeah, that's like yeah, that's what it comes down to is like they bought a really expensive house that they couldn't afford in the first place. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're house poor. That's what the problem is. That's why they both still live there. Right. And I kind of I have a theory that Ariana doesn't really live there. That <gasps> she like keeps her things there and like keeps the bedroom as kind of like a like a catch all, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't think she like spends nights there or spends like full days there. I don't know. I just, I think she stays somewhere else. Oh, interesting. I could, I could see that. But she just like is going to piss on her property and be like, this is mine. You can't take it from me. Listen, I'll hold a grudge my whole life. I get it. Absolutely. My entire life. I would <laughs> never move out. No. <laughs> No, there's no way in hell. The fact that they're both so petty with each other, like obviously he is a bigger asshole because he does not deserve to be there. But like I, it just, I love it. It makes me, brings me a lot of delight. Me too. <laughs> Um, the girls talk about like James essentially melting into putty into Sandoval's hands. And Ariana's right. Ariana says it makes me sad for James because he needs to respect himself more. <laughs> Worried about the wrong person. <laughs> um, Allie agrees. And then Lala comes in really, really hot. Sheena in this whole thing is quiet as a mouse. Just quite No opinions. Zip it, zipped it the whole time, just sitting there quietly. What did you think about all of this? I mean, I thought it was very smart that Sheena did not say anything, but mm -hmm. I don't know how much clearer Ariana can be mm -hmm. because I don't, again, they can't like talk about filming, but I think Ariana gets that people have to film with him. She's yeah. not stupid. She's not trying to take anyone's money. She's not yeah. trying to like make anyone unemployed or anything, but when he's inviting them to go to like a rat pack dinner or like whatever. Yeah. She's, she's allowed to be like, guys, you didn't need to film like that. Yeah. And I think she's right because she knows that James is an easy mark and she knows an easy mark. If he gets in with those two, then everybody just sort of has to like fall into place mm -hmm. and she gets iced out of the show. That's, I mean, she kind of mentions that like in her confessional because she recognizes that that's what's happening. And I think she's frustrated with them because she's like, how do you guys not see that this is exactly what is happening? There's no reason for you to continue filming with this person who is not a good person. He's using you to get camera time because that's mm -hmm. essentially what it is too, right? Like the more scenes you film with Sandoval, like it's better. It's incentive. You get more camera time, whatever. People are interested in these relationships. And it's like, okay, but why, why are you feeding his ego? It's like they're feeding it because they also have egos, Ariana. Yeah. Yeah, they're all sad. Yeah, and like the Lala and Katie fight, I felt like escalated super quick. That's Lala. I no. know, but the thing is, Lala, Katie survived a 40-foot fall. She's not afraid of you. Absolutely. She was married to Tom Schwartz for a really long time. She had She's to deal with whatever you. social media has said about her. Like, again, <laughs> she's starting to survive that 40-foot drop to begin with. Yes, exactly. Like, Katie's a G. <laughs> she is. And I think Katie is the straight shooter that Lala thinks she is. Mm -hmm. Like Lala thinks that she could do her little like gun pointing thing at Katie. And Katie is like, okay, but you're not saying anything. Say it with your chest. Say the whole thing with your chest. Say what you want to say. Why are you, why are you beating around the bush? And Katie always says exactly what's on her mind. Katie says when things are wrong, you know? Lady, uh, lady, Jesus Christ. Can you, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Lala, <laughs> yeah. Lala's like a lot of 
bark and no bite. Mm-hmm. And, like, she'll just be, like, bip, 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 and, like, whatever sticks is going to stick. But she doesn't have a point usually. No. Until, until someone's, like, oh, I can't believe you said that. She's, like, there's my point, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I have to say, again, Ariana and Sandoval are not the same as Rand and Lala for so many reasons. Lala, you had to move out of the house with Rand because that was not your home. Ariana does not have to move out of that house because she, that is also her home. Ariana does not have to associate with Tom Sandoval for the rest of her life because she does not have children with this man. You have to associate with Rand. So you have to find something in your heart to somewhat forgive this person so you could have a stable relationship for your child. Mm -hmm. Ariana does not owe that to Sandoval at all. She doesn't have to be nice to him if she doesn't want to. So for Lala to not like understand that and constantly keep putting her relationship on top of other people's to like fine empathy like Lala just she drives me nuts but great television totally totally agree so good um any other thoughts about these girls I don't like how they're treating Katie I don't like it no I've never liked it (laughs) um I don't know I get why Ariana had to come back this season but I don't know if she's like necessary for the storyline at this point because The thing is, Lala and Sheena are already getting, like, upset that she is getting Chicago and getting all these these great things have happened to her. And they they can't hide their jealousy, even though they sold merch about it. They made a million podcasts about it. They got the Uber Eats commercial because of Ariana. Yeah. Yeah. And... Again, like, I, I keep repeating myself, but it's the fourth wall thing. If they could just say... Ariana, we have to fucking film with this man. Yeah. But like, maybe Sheena does want to actually be friends with him. But I don't think Lala does. No, Lala doesn't want to be friends with him. And that's why I think it's easier for Ariana to understand where Lala is coming from. I think that in so many words, she has sort of said the co-worker situation. But um, I think that Ariana is very aware of the kind of people James and Sheena are. Yeah. That they are vulnerable and they will fall victim to somebody like Sandoval and he will take advantage of them and he will use them against her in some sort of way. Like he, him going and trying to be friends with James and Sheena is an attack directly on Ariana. Totally. Like that's, that she knows what that is. And so, and she's not worried because she knows that like, she uh, she knows that Lala doesn't really care for Sandoval. I think that she's just like, okay, whatever. But she's genuinely concerned about, like, Sheena's well-being when Sheena is going to, like, fall in the sword for this piece of shit. Like, she doesn't have to be that person. In an after show clip, um, Ariana said something like um, that Sheena is – if somebody says I don't fuck with you, I'm the kind of person that's like, I'm not going to fuck with you anymore. Sheena's the kind of person that's like – This is a challenge. I will make you love me again. (sighs) My God. Dark stuff. Dark stuff. But I totally see that. I guess my only other like random thought, and I know we were supposed to like record last week, but I was ill. You know, I'm so glad you're better. (laughs) Never expected Brock to be like the entertainment for me. Like (laughs) when I see Brock, I'm like, okay, something fun's going to happen. (laughs) <laughs> and like he started off when he first came on, I was like, who the fuck is this chump? You know I what know. I mean? And now I'm like, oh my God, it's the only one who's ready to like get fucked up on camera. Yay. Yeah. He's like taking shots in like his little Speedo <laughs> and like a kimono. He's the funniest thing to me was last week when he came after playing like six hours of golf, comes and sits down, takes off his shoes in front of everybody you know those feet stink so (laughs) bad and he's like wiggling his like giant little australian toes probably super sweaty onto the yoga mat his wife is crying and he's like time to do yoga and like crack me up I know he's like, oh, I guess I'll shit with James and Raquel then. Or <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, and Ali. Then. yeah, the dog needs me. And Sheena's like having an entire <laughs> mental breakdown, and he's like, Sheena, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> like, what the hell? That's why she was so upset, honestly, in that scene. It was that her husband wasn't like having her back. <laughs> right, her husband was like, ah, I was just playing golf for seven hours. Let's go. <laughs> 
Oh my God. Yeah, that was good. I appreciate Brock for also being, um, a, he's a good producer plant, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not a Christina Kelly. <sighs> <laughs> Like she's never done anything. She just like really gets under my skin. Yeah, that's I true. I feel like she would give me the dirtiest look. Like oh. I'd be like, "Hey," and she'd like look me up and down. I'd be like, "Uh oh." No, she's she. I think yeah, you're right. I think she takes me back to high school in a really bad way. <laughs> in the worst way. Oh no, she's so mean. <laughs> she says like five lines her whole like ten years on the show. I know. We're like. She's meanest person on <laughs> earth she like, triggers something deep inside of us yeah like Kristen slept with her best friend's boyfriend and we're like no one is meaner than Christina <laughs> Kelly <laughs> Christina Kelly's like I have lip gloss <laughs> she's like I'm a mom and we're like don't look at us <laughs> that's so funny Kelly, any other thoughts about these cuckoo birds that we love so much no but I love that like Lisa keeps trying to be like the wise old owl or something and these 40 year olds just don't need her anymore and we don't know what to do with that i'm excited to see how oh, i can't believe i say this i'm i am excited to see if i do watch the valley how that show works without lisa yeah i'm also excited to see like tom sandoval's reaction to ariana getting Dancing with the Stars and Broadway. Like, I can't wait for him to, like, say through his teeth how happy he is for her and how she deserves it. I actually do have one question for you. Yeah. Does Lisa just clone her dogs? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you mentioned it. That one dog donut, that was not a dog. What was that? That was, like, Jiggy. Was, like, Jiggy's head on, like, a toy. Like, it was very frightening i don't know that that house needs to be investigated <laughs> like those swans oh my god they're like cia animals <laughs> that's why they hate kyle yeah. they i i i don't know what's going on in that house but i don't believe any first of all i i don't understand like the smells that probably also exist in the house because she's like farm animals in the back but then she also has like roses everywhere <laughs> So it's like, you know, and I don't know if you read like the Hunger Games or watched it, but like they say how like the President Snow (laughs) smells like he has like this tooth decay problem. So he's a horrible smell like in his mouth, but he also always has roses on him so that it covers up that smell. And I feel like that's what Lisa's house probably smells like. It's like farm animals and roses. And you're like like, shit covered with Febreze. (laughs) Yeah, because she's all these tiny dogs. You know, they're shitting and pissing everywhere. Yeah. Now, did you see the stuff going on about Graham slash hippie? And okay. So apparently Rachel said that it was weird that Graham was so calm on camera Mm -hmm. that that was really strange because he has – he was like – they had to put him in foster because he was attacking people and they had – like even Ariana has mentioned this before that like Graham was a very aggressive dog. Mm -hmm. And so she took him to a good foster place that was like not a kill shelter and then she's like somehow then he ends up with Vanderpump. Don't know how that happened but it's strange how calm he is on camera and so now, like, somebody from Rachel's team also, like, tweeted, Nick Elaine, the guy who makes, the sh- like, the chandeliers at, like, Vanderpump's restaurant, left this whole thing saying, like, he was a perfect angel on the private jet to Lake Tahoe. It's like, Nick Elaine, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then and then somebody from Rachel's team was like, you're obviously drugging the dog to, like, film on camera. And I'm like, I believe it. I mean, I thought it was interesting when Graham, like, ran down the steps, Lala was like, that doesn't even seem like the same dog. Yes, I don't think that it is. And immediately I'm like, oh, it's just the same kind of dog. (laughs) Yes. I'm That Lisa Vanderpump, she's diabolical. She's President Snow. She is. (laughs) She is President Snow. (laughs) Or she's the other one who Julianne Moore played who, like, seems better than Coin. Seems better than President Snow, but, like, isn't. It's also not, yeah. And Ariana yeah. is Katniss. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's Allie. Allie's Katniss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I hope Allie, Allie's not Ariana's little sister, Katniss's little sister, who's That's like me. a nurse. Yeah, Prim. We don't want that. We don't want that. We don't <laughs> want a Prim life for you. No. Um, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, Kelly. Um, I'm so excited for you. Can you tell everybody about uh, your tour, your tickets, all that stuff, your shows, everything that's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So Beyond the Blinds is going on tour. We're starting May 3rd in D.C. We're also going to be in Chicago, Philly, Atlanta, um, Minneapolis, uh, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, L.A. And not exactly in that order, but if you hear a city near you, we're going there. (laughs) And link is in the Beyond the Blinds bio. Oh, my God. I'm going to try to go to the Philly show if I can. Oh, I would love that. Okay. Well, (laughs) no promises. I have to look at my calendar. Um, Anyway, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I will catch you next time. Thank you so much.